Today our guest is uh, Paul Bonder, owner of uh, Bonder Insurance Group. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Stanley. I appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about your professional career. Well, um, I got into insurance 15 years ago, and it wasn't something I planned to do, but it, um, it, it, it's a challenging occupation, but also rewarding. Uh, it's, a, it's a competitive, uh, very entrepreneurial type, type uh, uh, occupation because of the types of clients I work with, because they're very entrepreneurial typically in their nature. Most people are small business owners and uh, taking risk, doing their best they can in order to achieve the American dream, which is what this is, uh, that's what it's all about. Um, but our job is to protect them and to give them good advice. And I've said for many years now, good advice is really your best form of insurance. Was that the profession you were dreaming as a child? I don't think any child ever dreams to <laughs> dreams about being an insurance agent uh, or selling insurance, providing insurance solutions. Every child, I think, wants to be an athlete or a rock star or something like that. Uh, but nonetheless, it's what it's what we do. And um, did you start from scratch? I started. I started absolutely from uh, ground zero, from scratch. I started with a very large company back 15 years ago. I learned from very good people spent five years of my life in that organization and bought my uh, rights out to my clients uh, because I wanted to be more than just an employee, personally. Um, started up the company and... Uh, you wanted to be an entrepreneur. It, uh, for me, being an employee my whole life just wasn't... Um, Who you are. Wasn't for me. Yeah. We know that insurance is needed when there are certain risks. Uh, why are there so many risks in the tracking industry in the United States? Is it fair to say that this industry is very complicated and overregulated? Extremely complicated. Some would say it's regulated in part in order to create uh, supply, supply and demand within the market itself. Uh, statistics have shown that trucking has gotten uh, safer throughout the last decade, yet regulations have gone up significantly in the last 10 years. Um, you, you, you look at that and then you also look at the insurance aspect. The insurance carriers that, are, that exist in the market right now make it, it, it's really difficult for a trucking company to know 12 months from now what their insurance situation is going to look like. Because, yeah. like I said, they- Everything they, changes very rapidly. Changes rapidly. Insurance carriers are coming in and out of the marketplace. Rates are changing. Rules are changing. What a company can do in one area. Um, it, you know, it, it affects something in another area. So it can be very, very difficult for a trucking owner to really navigate these waters. And So uh, if you're an owner of a trucking company and you have so many risks uh, uh, in your industry, it is not so easy for them to manage those risks. Managing and identifying are the first steps. Yeah. And then figuring out what's the best way to transfer them. Yeah. Which, what risks are worth taking? I'm not an individual that's afraid of risk myself. I believe in taking some risk. But there's a big difference between calculated risk taking, which can give you an achievement, and yeah. gambling. And what I see, I've had the luxury to work with about 300 customers personally yeah. for the last 15 years, which gives me a little bit of experience because I've seen yeah. so many companies operate in so many different fashions. Mm -hmm. And I've learned from all these individual companies that some owners will take calculated risks, mm -hmm. and some will just gamble and chance it. Um, being strategic about it is really the key. And looking forward to try to mold your company into the profile that the insurance companies want, that's one of the, that's one of the, 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 the best ways to not be an orphan, if you will, in the insurance world. As far as I know, Every year, on the average, more than 50,000 50, people nationwide die on the roads in automobile accidents, and around 3 million people get hurt. Is this also a factor uh, contributing to the high risks in the trucking industry? It absolutely is, but I would say even more so than that, the trucking companies have a million dollar plus limit and attorneys target them. Yeah. And so they have a big target on your back. Yeah. I see commercials all the time with these attorneys late at night. They want to go after trucking companies because they know it's at least a million dollar insurance limit. As they, opposed know that they have a good source where they can get the money from. Deep pocket. 
as opposed to going and fighting and going to court for some guy who has basic auto you know, coverage for you know, $50,000. Yeah. The payout is not gonna be, so every trucking company has a target on their back where attorneys are trying to uh, sure. They need cash to be even more careful then. You, absolutely, more, uh, you know, I say that more careful, but um, I would say better prepared. Better prepared. They're, they're, they all are trying to, I think, be as careful as what they can be. Um, to a point. Not all of them are very knowledgeable, uh, and uh, because if you have the knowledge and the information, you can have a, uh, make an informative de decision. And the big thing is, is, for many companies, they have a lot of anxiety over: Will I get an insurance renewal next year? What will my insurance premium? What will it be? Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of insurance carriers that have come in and out of the out of the market, offering terms. Yeah. Those that sta have stayed have changed their rates. It's almost similar in a smaller scale, but it's similar in some ways to the healthcare crisis because it's a finite amount of insurance, it's extremely regulated, and trucking companies either they fit in a box or they don't, mm -hmm. and that can be extremely problematic. There's a lot of companies that go out of business every year just because they can't get insurance. Let's go uh, real quick over the mandatory types of insurance according to the federal uh, laws for trucking companies. Right. So every trucking company in order to become active, and you see on your safer site, I'm an active carrier, you have to have liability. And what liability is, is it's third party property damage or bodily injury. This means if you hit somebody and you cause injury to them or their vehicle, their property, it's a remedy to pay that party out if you're at fault. The government since 1980 Made that, a, made that a rule that like every mandatory. mandatory law that every carrier, every, every, every motor carrier has to secure $750,000 of um, liability, insurance. liability insurance or a million if you're hauling some hazmat loads. If it's super has, if it's very uh, high degree of hazmat, it, it, it's up to five million actually. So okay, there's some for the specific uh, carriers. Then we have uh, cargo insurance. Cargo insurance, you have to have it in order for your brokers or your, your vendors to give you loads. Commonly, a $100,000 limit is, is, is typically what we see. What does see. it cover? The cargo insurance covers the freight that's being hauled on the truck itself. Mm -hmm. So whatever material that might be. It may be a car hauler hauling beautiful Mercedes. It might be somebody hauling paper, plastic, you name it. Everything that goes to stores, everything that goes someplace from A to B on a truck, that's the cargo. And then we have the physical damage. Physical damage is for the truck or trailer itself. So you buy a brand new Freightliner, brand new Volvo. It's a hundred thousand uh, dollar truck. You get, in a, you get in a wreck. Something, you know, mm -hmm. something needs to be present in order to protect that That's lost the, payee. The equipment that you own. Absolutely. And on the road. And the most uh, controversial uh, mandatory insurance, which most of the owners even don't know that it's mandatory, the Work comp insurance? Staying like I could talk an hour on just this subject. Yeah, we need more, to keep it short. So, I'm, what can you say yeah, about it? I can say most, of, I won't say almost all, but it's close to almost all. Uh, trucking companies that first get into the business are very naive about the rules. I will, I, you know, ignorant bliss might be sometimes to not know. <laughs> You're not worried because you don't know. But at some point, it's going to come back and it's going to be a problem. Most people are completely unaware of the rules and regulations regarding workers' compensation. Um, and that uh, it eventually applies to their company, their business. The 1099 structure, the W-2 structure, it's, an empl it's, a, it's a labor issue in addition to a workers' compensation issue. Um, it has a tremendous amount of bearing as to if a driver gets injured, who's going to be responsible for the medical bills? Is it the driver's responsibility to pay a $75,000 hospital bill or is it the trucking company's responsibility? What's going to happen, most trucking companies assume it's the driver's issue. But in America, you're going to find most attorneys are going to go after the trucking company and it will become the trucking company's problem to fix that issue. Can you point out some eventual consequences uh, uh, and maybe that, that way we can uh, persuade uh, the uh, company owners that this is really a very significant issue? Well, uh, you know, I get calls oftentimes where people say, hey, I got your name, I got your number from a friend, I'm in a jam. 
you know, it might be one of my other customers. And I'll say, okay, what's the, what's the issue? Well, I didn't have any type of coverage like this. I had nothing in place. I had a driver that got hurt. Um, might be minor, might be, you know, a few thousand dollars, or it could be several hundreds of thousands of dollars, or paralysis. I had a guy get paralyzed, uh, a driver get paralyzed. That was going to rack up huge medical bills, pain and suffering, people not, the driver will never be able to work in the same manner, so there's short and long-term disabilities. All these, all these expenses is, are going to become the, the motor carrier's Some of problem. them are retroactive. They can go two, three years back and it can be... Well, I was, yes, I'm getting that. It, uh, uh, many attorneys that take this case on are not only going to sue the trucking company for those benefits, they're also, if they have no coverage, they're also going to notify the state of Illinois, and the state of Illinois is going to fine them. I believe from my last information was it could be $500 a day or going back three years, whatever the work comp premiums would have been. This is per case, per person. Huge. You might have several so huge. drivers it could be, in your it, company. It could be a huge fine, amount. a huge amount. So it's a, it's a big exposure, and identifying and quantifying what the exposure is for, for at least people to understand what they're, what they're facing is the first step into coming up to, yeah. with a solution. And the second step is to, uh, to get some information and get educated so that you can make an informative decision. Exactly. So uh, let's also mention some, uh, not mandatory, but prudent to have uh, insurance uh, products like travel intercha interchange, occasional uh, okay, uh, occupational Occupational accident. Occupational accident and employment practice and employee theft. Mm -hmm. So trailer interchange is really simple. If you pick up somebody else's trailer and it's in your care, custody, and control, in other words, I have a trailer that's not my trailer, but it's in my possession, it becomes oftentimes my responsibility. Trailer interchange gives you coverage to insure those trailers. If there's any damage. But this, right. uh, my understanding is this does not relate to travels that are leased. It could. It, it could. depends on what yeah. is uh, in the lease agreement. There needs to be a lease agreement. There needs the lease to be agreement uh, defines who, like the responsibilities as far as the insurance. Correct. Yeah. It, in order to have true trailer interchange, you actually need a written agreement. Yeah. Otherwise, you can do a coverage called non-owned trailer. So there's two different ways to slice and dice it. All right. What about the uh, occupational accident? Occupational accident. It's My understanding is that it, this is an alternative of the work camp, but it basically is not enough to comply with the federal law. The state of Illinois really doesn't recognize OCAC, but many states do. Um, so some customers... Some states do. Some states do. Texas, for example, there's a number of states that are... Their, their um, leniency or their disposition in the work comp rules and regs is different from state but to state. But Illinois recognizes only work comp and the occupational accident is not recognized. So you cannot comply with Illinois law. It's, it is a challenge for a lot but of drivers. But you can protect yourself in a way. It, it provides similar type benefits that workers' compensation does provide. So, so it basically provides benefits. It's uh, covered as if uh, some of your uh, driver, for example, gets injured. Yeah, that and lo long and short-term disability. And yeah. for, for trucking companies that have different locations, yeah. uh, drivers in different states, it can be a very good remedy for those particular types of operations. Okay, and what about uh, employee practice and employee theft? Is it really very important? It's an area that I'm starting, you know, you Can see you that. Can give a specific example why it might be important? Absolutely. Um, this type of coverage would be, it's a very open-ended area. If you don't hire me because I'm a certain race, you could be sued for that. Uh, if you fire me because I'm too old. Like you discrimination? Could, dis or? Absolutely. Discrimination okay. on any multitude of different things. Uh, sexual harassment. Well. Uh, you know, in the workplace, whether that be quid pro quo or a hostile environment. In other words, you know, you do something for me and I'm going to promote you, that type of arrangement, or just... Uh, this all employee theft also. Employee theft would be a, a, a separate, different area that we can put, you know, we can put a program together with a particular insurance company to does cover it, both of those. Does it happen often like a driver, uh, like... Uh, steals a trailer with the, with the cargo and uh, basically asks for money in order to release it or something like that? As a matter of fact, it happened today to one of our customers. Oh, really? As a matter of fact. Um, most That's people really dumb to do in the United States, but uh, I'm amazed people do it. You know? Yeah, I've had all kinds, of, all kinds of situations. We've had drivers steal cargo, start selling the money, start selling the cargo the to cargo. get money 
from our from our, our customers okay. in order to get money to buy crack cocaine, to pick up a hooker, to well, do all kinds of different things. We had different claims that I've seen where the car, the, the, the truck was recovered at a Motel 7 down in Tennessee, yeah. um, vacuum cleaner parts, all different types of, you name it. Who, who would think vacuum cleaner so parts would be So these are not target? imaginary risks, these are real risks real, happening. Real. I had powdered cheese. Over and over again. We had a customer that had a driver that got disgruntled, and the powdered cheese is a food product. Yeah. The truck was missing for t more than 24 hours. By FDA rule, the food, you know, food and Drug Administration, they wanted to condemn the cheese. Yeah. It's an $80,000 loss. Yeah. We got a remedy in this situation, fortunately, and, and, and the claim worked out. However, it's a standard provision with insurance that employee theft, and that means driver, because you've given the truck to that person. If they do something, that's a typical exclusion. So the important thing is identifying that there are certain exclusions that exist in insurance and finding the right solution, the other policy, to plug in there. Usually for you know, a policy like that, it's a couple thousand dollars to plug that exposure. And if you think about it, a truck, a $250,000 load of cargo, all these different things that, that could be stolen, it's a wanna, very good sh shift of... I want to talk a little bit about uh, two types of insurance uh, which are very common in many different uh, 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 areas, industries, and used by many businesses. Uh, errors in emission insurance and umbrella insurance. Uh, how do they apply to the trucking industry? So one of the big issues that one of my customers had years ago is another common exclusion because insurance is risk transfer. They, they don't take everything under the sun. Okay. They take some risk. One of the common exclusions is if a driver, I'll give you an example, makes a mistake on setting the refrigeration temperature. So for all you reefer carriers out there, this applies to you. You get a, a driver that makes a mistake, either he's inexperienced or he's, you know what, and he puts the wrong setting on there and it causes the product to the freeze. That mistake is not in, is, is is not insurable under ninety nine percent. But it can be covered by errors and emissions. There is a f there is a way to cover that. Yeah, I do have a I have uh, a method. There is there are certain ways to have what's called reefer E and O added to a policy, and this is where it comes down to my original statement where good advice is your best insurance identifying these different things. That's, Whether you that's your motor of your co uh, uh, company, but uh, w w would you advise a uh, company owner, like a truck company owner, to get errors and emissions insurance? If you're hauling reefer, a, a refrigeration pro uh, a refrigeration product, it's advisable. I, it is very much advisable because you cannot control the action of the driver. And that's, yeah. the, that's a huge exposure. As, as much as a trucking company is going to try to hire the best drivers, when, when you have a, a driver that makes a mistake and it's a load of meat and, and it's $200,000 down the drain, the driver will never pay for that. You need to protect You're your business. Yeah. Uh, exactly. What about the umbrella insurance? How important is and uh, which particular companies need this insurance? Well, um, umbrella gives you depth of limits. And so a lot of our customers, they're, they're required oftentimes to have higher limits and to get an umbrella to give them deeper liability limits yeah. by contract. So when that's necessary. So uh, in order to comply with certain contracts that require for certain depths of insurance, you need then to get this umbrella. Absolutely. To comply with the contract. Cor correct. Most often, Stanley, people are prompted to get insurance in order to comply with contracts. And so one of the goals is, is to get as much, as, as much insurance as possible but, but keep it affordable. Yeah. That's the line you have to straddle. Uh, what are the biggest business challenges for truck company owners based on your experience? Well, a few of them. You know, they've got exposures, they've got issues coming at all different angles. Uh, DOT compliance is, is gonna be an ongoing issue for all truck companies. Okay. That hinges off because their safety scores that even though they're off the site now, the insurance carriers still have a software to track what their scores are. We can see what the scores are. I have that software. So but when, you, when you calculate the premium, uh, you base it on this information? The insurance carriers relate a lot of the premium based on the safety scores that a trucking company accrues 
or has on their safer system from their out of service inspections or their positive inspections. Mm -hmm. So insurance has got to be in the top five areas uh, you know, that a trucking company, uh, top five areas of, of, of what they have to prioritize, prioritize because mm -hmm. it's such a variable. And if you can't secure it, go back to 1980 rule that I was talking about, you're not allowed to go on the road, you know? Some truck company owners business vision boils down to it won't happen to me. Is this the right attitude? I mean, if you believe that, then you should take your money and go to Vegas and uh, put it on roulette. I that's, mean, that's what you're you're, win. That's what you meant when you said that some business owners are, uh, have like a gambling concept. Correct. I really believe it's an evolution of sorts where somebody comes into the business. We work, I, I work with all different types of business trucking owners throughout the years. Usually the, the guys that have been in business longer, they ask more questions from me and they have less answers. The guys fresh into the business seem to have a lot of the answers in their, already in their brain yeah. and don't ask a lot, they don't want a, a lot of, they don't ask a lot of questions. So I think percent. over time people realize that there are exposures Normally, they, they realize that when they hear a friend who has it happen to them, or it actually happens to them themselves, and they say, well, I don't want to be burned by this because this is real. This isn't just something my agent is telling me about or something I read on the internet. This happened to my friend right down on the, you know, on the next street yeah. where he had a $100,000 issue. I want to ask you a question. Uh, are all insurance companies existing right now on the market and servicing the tracking industry the same? They're not. I would classify them, first of all, the amount of insurance companies that are interested in truck insurance are very few and far between. Yeah. Many have left the marketplace, if you will. Some have gone bankrupt Why? because they have, I'm sorry? Why? Some of them just have not been able to make money in trucking. Okay. And they went bankrupt. As high as the premiums seem to be, the problem is, is that the attorneys get these big payouts. Yeah. And so that's what raises the premiums up um, for a lot of customers. And it's being able to have people, keep people in a, in a position where, they able, where they're able to effectively afford the premiums. Because at the end of the day, every truck company is competing with all the other truck companies with what their expenses are and what their incomes are. And if that's not balanced, and that's where there's a disconnect with the insurance companies. Insurance company people, I'm an agent, I'm an independent. So yeah. I'm in the middle, I'm a middleman. People that sit in the insurance world, they think, well, they can afford to pay. No, if you get over a certain threshold, it becomes a real problem. When a trucking company becomes eventually uninsurable and how this can be avoided? The areas, I mean, it's a distressed company. The, the, the primary areas where you become uninsurable would be uh, if somebody has uh, severe claims is, is, is often the first one, but yeah. um, you're a chameleon carrier, for example, they have software to look at that. And by chameleon, I mean, you've owned a trucking company before, it didn't work out, so you're on your second or third or fourth life. Yeah. Insurance companies don't exactly like that because they're picking up something that they're not quite sure yeah. what once was. Um, inexperienced drivers, younger companies, younger motor carrier companies that have had claims Gambling or issues. Gambling uh, truck, truck company owners. I'm sorry, gambling? Gambling. <laughs> yeah, yes. You yeah. know, I mean, I, I get taking risk. Everybody has to take risks to be successful. The point is, is taking risks in a, in a smart manner, right? <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up with my uh, last question to you. Can you continue this sentence? Trucking company owners who tend to save money on insurance are? open-minded, they adapt because t as times change, they have to change. Um, they review the past, they think about the present, and they plan for the future. The carriers that want to put their head in the sand and say, it's not going to happen to me, they're gambling because statistically, drivers are what drivers are. And as good as you think your drivers are, there's some idiot on the road that can hit you um, as good as you think you're prepared. Uh, Sometimes you uh, depend on third-party people and factors uh, and it's beyond your control. It is beyond your control. And having, um, having a good plan for the future, identifying what, what your risks are and understanding 
what you have in place and what you don't have in place. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is really power. And that, it goes back to um, what we were talking about earlier. The guys that have been in business longer, they ask more questions because mm -hmm. they're, they, they, want, they, they, they know that there's more information to cover. And let's finish with uh, your uh, motto. Like the most important insurance business is? Good advice is your best insurance. Thank you very much for being with us and hope to see you many times on our show. Thank you, Stanley.